afternoon everyone oh chaos 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 shed come a little closer and let's have a chat that's better have a sit a proper hello to you all how are you doing i hope you're well it's unbelievably hot and humid again. The humidity is what's really getting to me. As soon as I arrived on site, one of my fellow plotters up near the gate, I'm stripping, um, he's wearing a grey t-shirt. It's almost black. I looked at it and I thought, I mean, walking down, I thought, yeah, it's quite humid. But as soon as I saw him in his soaking t-shirt, I thought, oh, goodness me, I'm going to be in for a tough session. Anyway, right, I'm going to get on with this while we chat. Um, the onions are all now dry, so I'm just going to tidy them up a bit. You know, loose roots can come off all of this foliage. I will quite simply... Ah, now I'm not going to string them. I don't have time. They're too little, etc, etc. If you were going to be stringing them up, you'd want to leave maybe about 10 centimetres of neck to use in the stringing. <clears throat> I'm not stringing, so just going to snip off, remove any loose outer leaves. Don't be too precious about taking the leaves off though because the leaves are the packet. And then I always, there's a final thing, <laughs> I just give the tops a little bit of a twist. As they've dried that neck has shrunk and uh, has, it should have sealed it but I just give a little twist at the end to make sure and that should store perfectly well. Where are we now? It's the, middle of Sept it's the middle of September. The temperature is 26 degrees at the moment, which for Fahrenheit fans is low mid 80s and humid. Humidity. Anyway, uh, so mid September, in theory, they'd store right through to next May, possibly just into June in time for the next harvest. Um, if I was to see them starting to show signs of sprouting, maybe end of March, beginning of April, uh, I'd simply get them all chopped up and frozen, fro frozen as raw chopped onions. This year, they are not going to last until April or May because I won't be storing them that long because I'll be eating them because it has been a really, really rubbish <clears throat> onion harvest this year um, I don't I honestly don't know why they went in <clears throat> put it this way they went in way before we got into drought and got into that heat <clears throat> excuse me I did everything the same as I've done every year in terms of bed prep spacing everything in terms of weather when they went in the soil was just beginning to warm up, um, we were having warm days, we had <laughs> plenty of rain throughout the middle of May and then obviously as we went into drought I kept them watered, we free, in other words all my usual stuff and some of them just, they just never got out of being at the stage of being a set and then there's a few that tried to grow they got bigger than a set, but <laughs> that's it. I mean, that's the size I normally want for cooking. And that's the size I got of loads of them. So to start with, so I normally sow between 80 and 100 of each set. So the whites and the reds. In theory, I'd love to have 200 onions and that's four a week, two whites, two reds per week. It never quite comes out at 200. I think the best was about 170. Um, the previous worst, right, clean, clean as you work, Vivi. <clears throat> the previous worst was about 120. But I eked them out, it was fine. <clears throat> Some recipes were, you know, I use an onion. I might have used half an onion. But yeah, that I eked them out and it was fine. This year, I reckon I've got about 80 in total. However, most of them are so small, 
I'm going to be using two per recipe. So it's almost like I've ended up with 40. <laughs> That's not even one onion a week. What I'll probably do is, <clears throat> I'll think of it as one onion a week, <clears throat> see how I get on. If I think, you know, I really need at least two onions a week, I'll go to two onions a week and then next year <laughs> to buy some. Fortunately, organic onions are one thing I can buy locally in terms of organic versions of my veggies. So yeah, it's a really disappointing harvest. All the more reason to really look after these that I did manage to get. They'll be coming home with me to, oh no, actually, think about it, Vivi. No, I've got loads at home. I've already taken the first lot home. I've probably got about 20 at home in total, about 10 of each left, so I don't need to take any more home for now. Um, as for storing, like I said, I'm not bothering with stringing them up this year, partly because they're so tiddly. Also, it's a time thing. They'll just hang in my string bags in the fridge, in the, in the shed, in my big fridge, in the shed. We should be cooling down soon and that'll be great for them. Um, sorry, my mind's a bit all over the place today. One of the... We're into that time of year, or at least this is the time of year for me, maybe different for other people, where you think, oh, you know, the work's done, all that hard work of the spring, all the digging and the bed prep, etc, etc. Gosh, I need water on this day. You know, all the hard work's done. Yay. <laughs> and then suddenly we get to now and yeah, the hard work now really cracks in because, because we've had the rain, of course, suddenly we have weeds again. Yay. The grass is growing again. I'm amazed the grass has come back so green. It's beautiful. The grass is growing. There's so many little maintenance jobs to be doing. Pass harvesting 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 all the time factoring in time for getting the harvest home and preserved uh, or you know today factoring in time this is completely different to what I was going to be doing today because I didn't think about this but factoring in time for dealing with the harvests Factoring in time for, you know, as some beds close down for the winter, you know, getting covered. Starting to think about, oh, I need to look out for cardboard. I need to remember to bring cardboard down with me each time. <laughs> It'll soon be time to take down the bean poles, get them cleaned off and stored. Da -da. So yeah, it's, it's crazy busy. It's wonderful. It's such a wonderful crazy busy. But I think even more than in springtime, I really have to think about my time and plan my time carefully. And like I said, this is not what I was planning to do today. But the reason I'm doing this, and you'll have seen from that first shot, opening shot, it's just chaos here. I've got a sea of bags of lavender waiting to be hung. Some will lie on the top of the drying rack. Uh, the harvest, the lavender harvest this year has been phenomenal. It's wonderful and it's precious. Every harvest is precious. And that's what I mean about really making the time and taking the time to do right by our harvests. Let's not waste anything. All that work we put into getting everything to this stage, it would be crazy <laughs> to let things go to waste. The re so the reason I'm doing the onions is because all the lavender is in bags here waiting. The reason all the lavender is sitting on the floor here waiting is they were all piled up in the wheelbarrow because I didn't have time to do them the other day. The wheelbarrow got wheeled into the shed, so both the doors are open today because I've wheeled the wheelbarrow out, mounded up in the barrow. The reason I've tackled the lavender was because I need the barrow for 
what was supposed to be my first job of today. So I need the barrow, so I've had to empty the barrow of all the lavender. So all the lavender is now in bags, they're waiting to be hung and put on the drying rack. I can't do that until the onions come off and the onions get processed, so I'm processing the onions first. <laughs> oh my goody goodness. I've also got, I've still got, um, Brought, brought from home clean trays, clean pots, etc, etc, which need properly stacking so I can squish away the maximum amount. I've got another stack of dirty pots and trays to go home to be cleaned. Now, the reason I've got a load more dirty pots and trays to be cleaned is because I popped down yesterday. I'm going to give you, share with you a little bit of footage from that and then I might go and show you the end result afterwards. The reason I came down yesterday, it's like, it, it, it's this, everything's a knock-on. And in a way, um, this, you know, getting organised today and doing stuff that I didn't think I was going to be doing, but I need to do. In a way, the garden dictates what needs doing. Hang on, let me just, I'm just going to tip a handful of my onions out. into. I've just got my riddle on the table to hold them whilst I... Once they're processed, I decant them into my big old enamel bowl. Hold on a sec. There we go. We all went orange for a minute. Um, yeah, the, the garden, in a way, is dictating everything that needs to happen. So if we just look to, at, and listen to our garden, we'll know what jobs need doing. The reason I'm mentioning that job I did yesterday was because it, it was sort of dictated by nature because we've had almost a week of rain. Hallelujah. It, five days, five days of rain and it wasn't non-stop. Oh, hang on a minute, here's our Gary. I think he's got some seedlings for me, hang on a tick. What a lovely interlude with our Gary and <laughs> put it down finish the onions it's an hour and a half later oh my goodness and oh, we now have beer too hang on mm. lovely on a hot day what a treat it's so funny Gary and I had the same thought because <clears throat> we texted each other this morning to coordinate because he has some seedlings possibly for me uh, yes I'm coming today it's a beautiful day and just as I was saying recently about really really making the most of these beautiful days before winter comes on my way I thought oh let's get a couple of beers and then after all the work is done we can sit and chat over a nice beer Gary had the same idea so we just had one now while we chat and we'll probably have another one a little bit later when we finish <coughs> what I was saying <coughs> excuse me before Gary so rudely interrupted uh, <laughs> about this rain. So we'd had pretty much, I think it was five days of rain. It wasn't completely continuous. We'd have a couple of hours on, a couple of hours off, but it was on, off, on, off, on, off, pardon me, for five days. Sometimes it was really heavy, really, really heavy, but mostly it was just medium weight rain. Uh, but the great thing was that even when it was really heavy, then it would, everything would stop for a couple of hours. That rain had time to soak into the soil before the next rain came. So, because of that, I popped down yesterday. It was the first dry day. Yeah, I think yesterday was our first dry day to do a job, which is a long overdue. Um, everything I was gonna do today, is now going to happen I think tomorrow because the rain has impacted on some other stuff as well <clears throat> making it a bit more of an urgent thing and this is what I mean about um, you know we can plan we can have our lists etc etc but ultimately the garden is going to tell us what we need to do so having had all that rain I was hopeful that it would have softened the soil enough for me to finally plant my brassicas so the plan was and you'll see a little bit of it now the plan was where I'd had the two onion beds the white onion bed the red onion bed 
that ground wasn't too compact where those roots had been. That's where I popped my brassicas. But because we had all that rain, I was wondering if perhaps the garlic bed would have softened a bit. Not much. And the ex brawn bean bed, not much. But I did get down here and, ah, oh, just to say, because I can't remember if I say it in this video clip, the, the brassicas have amazingly, they've survived quite well this summer. Ah, oh, it's out of reach over there, I can't show you. Actually, I want to show you, hang on a tick. Um, because I think this is what has helped. So obviously I've kept things watered, but normally, um, previous years my brassicas have got completely pot bound and it just stunts them and then even when they get planted out they just don't want to grow but my container wise modules you can see that bit of tapering it's that, that shape apparently discourages the roots going around and around and around getting pot bound so the plants are small but they look strong and healthy so I decided finally um, how many months late? Two months late? Normally what would happen is, I'll tell you what would normally happen in a minute. I'll show you this clip and then we'll go out into the garden and I'll show you the final result. didn't grow. I wasn't actually going to turn the camera on today, um, but I thought I'd quickly, <coughs> dust of soil down my throat, quickly explain what I'm doing and then we're coming back tomorrow for some proper filming, but I'm getting my brassicas in today, finally. So this bed is mostly purple sprouting broccoli and then, oopla, then I've got a few of my red kale. I'm <laughs> ridiculously late planting these, obviously. We're into the second week of September, never mind. But they're all looking quite robust and healthy. I've had them, I sewed them in the modules, the container-wise modules, which helps to root train them as well. And I think that's what's really helped those containers. Anyway, yes, yeah, so it's really late to put them in, but, but, but two things. One, it was impossible over the summer. It's too hot, too dry, concrete ground. Uh, we have had a week of on-off rain, so it's helped soften the ground a bit. But the main thing is, oh, I just pop that one back across there, get planting. What I'll do when, once they're all planted is I'll go back along the row to heal them in because they like to have a really, really, they like to be really, really firmed in. Yeah, the, the point is, if I leave them in the modules, they have zero chance of coming to anything whereas if I plant them they do have at least a bit of a chance and my attitude this year um, also I'm planting them a little bit deeper earthing them up a little bit just to really help stabilize them in the ground yeah my thinking is this I might as well stick them in the ground. I've got an empty bed, and now the rain has done me a favor of softening the soil a bit to help me get them in. So I might as well stick them in, because what else, put them on the compost heap. And you know what, they may not grow very big over the winter, but maybe they'll grow big enough for me to harvest just a few leaves from. And I love my brassicas in the winter partly because it's one of the only fresh foods I get through the winter, apart from the chard, parsnips, normally carrots. <laughs> um, but yeah, I love, I love having them because it's fresh 
and it's some green stuff because a lot of my stored stuff is orange or red <laughs> so yeah pop them in and give them give them a chance so I'm putting in today um, you know what that'll do for now when I'm back tomorrow there's another job to do with the beds um, I will explain what I've planted yeah we'll come back tomorrow or by the time you're seeing this in that bit of video it'll be today I've confused myself now right come on Vivi planting planting and firming and yes it does feel really counterintuitive with my soil <laughs> to put my great big size eights in to firm them like this because it does compact the soil but brassicas need it whoopee <laughs> so here i am at the top bed just to say i don't know if you can get a sense of it through the camera but look how things have greened up with five days of rain this grass that was like straw dust on concrete is green again all the plants with that dose of nitrogen from the sky everything's greened up it's gorgeous i love it <clears throat> and what i really love is now one two yes i managed it three beds planted up so <clears throat> excuse me what i was alluding to a second ago not the clip you saw but when i was outside the shed is in terms of lateness and timing so these two beds had onions in and normally i take the onions out hmm, say middle of, middle of july or so and then i straight away plant following them but you know it just didn't happen it's too hot too dry late likewise where the garlic come out they come out about the middle of may again i would plant straight after they come out so that bed would have been in continuous use it turned to rock couldn't get anything in there and there is one more bed there that had the broad beans they come out at the end of may and again it's normally straight away followed with brassicas so yes everything is late <clears throat> more picking to do oh they're so beautiful don't digress really <clears throat> yes everything is late the plants are tiny, but I don't know if you get a sense of it properly through the mesh. This is purple sprouting broccoli, and then I had four surviving that the slugs didn't get. Four surviving red curly kale. Actually, you can't really see them because they're disguised against the soil. So, yeah, the plants looked healthy enough tiny but my thinking is you know what even if they turn into small plants over the winter it will still be a leaf or two here or there so purple sprouting broccoli a couple of four i think red curly kale the next bed over two rows of cavallo nero one two three four five six seven eight eight in a row so that's 16 plants it's a great brassica it's a cotton come again so yeah you know a leaf if I harvest once a week and take a leaf one leaf from each plant that's 16 leaves that's enough for four meals brilliant what I'm really pleased about though I nearly gave up but I didn't <laughs> this is the ex garlic bed and it was really really even with the rain it was still really really tough <clears throat> oh, so I've got a frog in my throat now. I need a sip of beer. <laughs> now, this has got in it the dazzling blue kale, which is seed that Paul saved from his plants and passed on to me. So I'm delighted. At the moment, these nets aren't permanent. I definitely do not need shade netting on, but I don't have any more of the Enviromesh, the sort of clear, if you like, tunnels. They will come over here because there are two more jobs I need to do. One, mulching, but two, I need to use my big blue water pipes and big 
lengths of enviro mesh to get these beds covered with sort of much much bigger hoopage <laughs> hoping that they grow i was going to do the hoops here but i could not get the blue pipes into the ground at all the, this ground like i said despite the rain is still rock hard so that ground was a bit easier so that was going to be my job today before oh, distraction started you know i said right you know in a few minutes ago about i needed the wheelbarrow and therefore i had to sort the lavender out and to sort the lavender out, i had to sort the onions out the reason i wanted the wheelbarrow is because i want to go and empty the compost bin so that will wait so these nets um these aren't their permanent ones for winter and in general I prefer my nets off in the winter, but for now, these are on to keep any of the cabbage white butterflies off. Like I say, shade netting is not what I need, um, but it will all do for now. And then just following on, oh, look at these jewels waiting. This is gonna to be tomorrow. This is what I was saying the other day about, so harvesting was also part of my job today because tomorrow I was intending to spend all day in the kitchen preserving. But I need to have another garden day tomorrow, so I will pick tomorrow. I'm not gonna pick before I've got a chance to preserve. So this was the ex-broad bean bed. Now all the trays were sitting along this row, so the ground didn't get a drop of rain. <laughs> so it's bone dry. And I thought, oh, I'll have a go. No, concrete could not work it. This side got all the rain. Even so, it was really, really, really hard to plant everything. Um, but what I've done in here is I've got some, I think I've got one purple sprouting broccoli, two Cavallonero, and the rest I think are Calabres, the only surviving Calabres after the slugs. So they're in there. Again, it doesn't need shade netting. That's the only net I've got. And then I've got these four, the labels have faded, I'll have to ask again. These were four brassicas that Catherine said I could have and I want to plant them in here but I can't at the moment because it's rock hard so what I'll do on my next visit is I'll come and soak this bed as soon as I get here do a bit of work soak it again do a bit more work soak or test it at that point and possibly soak it again which will make it possible for me to plant these in oh <laughs> that's one tray I missed in clearing up so yeah, I am absolutely chuffed to bits to finally have these empty beds in action again. I mean, they've already been in action this year. These beds have all produced already. Brilliant. Now, with this bed, this is what I'm going to get into tomorrow too. The Coco Noir that I was trying, that Jim gave me the seed for to try, they baked in the sun straight away. So I didn't get to try them. I wanted to try them fresh. So I'll take them out, I'll save everything for seed. And that, let's step down so you can see what I'm talking about. That's gonna create a bit of a gap there. Chard will stay in all winter. These courgette plants are almost done. They'll be coming out soon. And certainly the tomatoes will be coming out soon. Gary was telling me that he's got some spare lettuce seedlings. Uh, I can't remember what varieties, we'll find out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dot this bed, dot all around these plants with any lettuce seedlings Gary's got spare. When it comes to these plants being over, I'll simply cut them off at the stem. I won't try and pull them out because I don't want to disturb the ground around because hopefully the lettuces will be getting away. I think what I'll do is he's just strimming at the moment. Can we see him? Can you see him? He's right over there. <laughs> get an idea of where Gary's plot is compared with mine. Can you see? Let me see if I can close you in on him. There he is. <laughs> Give us a wave. There he is. That's our Gary's plot. So yeah, I think I'm going to go. Can I come and look at your lettuce seedlings? Let's go and have a look. Yay. So I've espied where Gary's lettuce, what is it, little gem seedlings are. Seedlings, they're little plants, proper good little plants. So good, 
just in case he's not around tomorrow it means I know where to go on his plot to dig up a clump to bring over to my plot to divide and plant fab so I think I'm going to wrap it up there for now oh, it's so humid I'm so hot I need another glug it's not quite as icy cold as it was what a great afternoon I haven't done a single thing that was on my list never mind I'll do it tomorrow because tomorrow I can hit the ground running but a wonderful afternoon because I'm looking after my harvests I'm getting harvest central the shed sorted out I've had time with friends another of my neighbors has been out we've chatted you know and a lot of us were chatting about the Queen a bit we just sort of sharing thoughts and feelings that's lovely and there's no there's no judgment it's all just we're all allowing each other to feel how we feel which is brilliant <sighs> what I, oh, I just feel so darned lucky to have this little garden and this reprieve from the rest of the world and friends to share it with I'm going to shut up now because I've got a ton a ton of work to do and I also need to pack the granny trolley up with stuff to go home that's either to be washed to be brought back or bits and bobs of stuff that's in the shed that I need I want to now take home and keep at home so this afternoon ain't over yet but the treat is once it's all done once Gary's finished strimming and doing his bits and bobs he's gonna swing by again we'll sit and we'll have another little beer the ones he bought he bought little bottles one bottled <laughs> ones we're just gonna sit and relax before we all wend our way home I will see you again really soon um, <laughs> yeah doing the jobs that I'm supposed to be doing today we'll do it tomorrow you'll see it in a couple of days either way until then please look after yourselves make the most of your harvests keep getting out there keep picking if you can You've got the time, the space, pick daily, get it picked, get it processed, get it stored. Yeah. Every morsel counts more than ever. Have fun. All right, lovelies, for now, cheerio.